Hello, it's Ruby, and today I'm going to be sharing 15 habits that you might want to adopt as a student in 2022. I just hope that you find this video useful. So the first one is very, very standard. I feel like when people say, what is your New Year's resolution? This is always in the top three that come up, which is to drink more water. But genuinely, it is so important for everyone, but especially for students. Because we concentrate better when we're hydrated. I notice such a difference in my concentration levels when I don't have water. So before a class, even if it means running late, I will always fill up my water bottle. After my laptop, it's my number one study essential. I would recommend always having a reusable bottle with you in your bag and only fill it up with as much as you think you're gonna drink so you don't have to carry something heavy. But I would recommend always filling it up before class. Number two is to research something you're interested in for each of your subjects or modules every single week. This can be absolutely anything. It can be very loosely related as well. So for example, let's say you read A Tale of Two Cities. You might decide to randomly research the wine trade during the French Revolution because of how significant wine and blood imagery is in that book. It can be something really tiny, something specific, and you can spend as little or as long on this as you want to. I just think it's really great for getting excited about your education and finding your own interests within the things that you're studying. It can also practically be useful when it comes to exams and writing essays because you've got all of this research and this work on things that personally interest you and which are more original and can be adapted to essay questions. Number three is to set a monthly task list with your goals, things that you want to do that month things you want to focus on. I got this tip from V's book Empowered but I have been splitting these goals into different sections of my life so I've got personal, academic, YouTube, professional. Of course this is slightly more long term than a weekly to-do list and I always find that when I write a long term to-do list I'm always more ambitious. Number four is to have a reset day for deleting files, decluttering, renaming files so you don't get overwhelmed and digitally cluttered, which I always find myself doing. I am adamant that this year I really stick to this habit. It's the number one habit I'm going to try and build this year because I hate when my laptop is clogged up with files, it's so hard to find things, you always just feel disorganised. Number five is to use a planner and write a to-do list every single day. We're always more productive when we write to-do lists. But also levelling up your to-do list, so making a note of how long you want each task to take. For example, if you're going to run through some flashcards, say you're going to run through these for 30 minutes, or if you're going to write an essay, giving yourself two hours. According to Parkinson's law, tasks will elongate to fit the length of time that we provide and so by setting time constraints we will just make the most from our time. Number six is kind of related to number two but it's just to do a piece of extra critical reading every week so if your teacher or lecturer has recommended an extension task don't feel like you have to do all of it um, and everything that they recommend but try and do at least one thing every week. You can always go on a research tangent and do more if you have time but setting that as a minimum is uh, just good for getting the most out of your education and the resources that are being offered to you. Number seven is setting social media time. I'm setting set times in the day where I can go on my phone, go on social media, as opposed to it being something I can access whenever I want. When I set social media time as a task, I always find that I'm more intentional with it and I treat it more as something to gain from. When I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm actually thinking how I can gain from this content and I'm appreciating this content as opposed to treating it as a method of procrastination. Not sure if this actually makes any sense. Maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me, but I feel happier after going on the social media than I would do if I if I hadn't scheduled it. Leading on from that too, setting restrictions on apps. So I've very briefly shown you how you can do this on your iPhone if you have an iPhone. Um, there is a downtime feature where you can set time restrictions for each of your apps. So as you can see, I've got a 45 minute limit for Instagram. Um, and you can also set times where all apps will be limited on your phone. Number eight is to every day reflect on something you learned that day writing down just one to three things that you learnt. During term time, I try to write down one thing that I learnt academically and then two things that I just learnt generally as life lesson. But for the academic one, it's great for being more synoptic with your learning and thinking about how you can apply what you're learning to real life, to personal growth. And again, I think it just highlights that gratitude for being able to study because you can look back on your day and think like, wow, 
I had the opportunity to learn that. Um, I don't know, that's how I think about it. Number nine is going outside every day. There are so many studies that show that this can improve mood. It's one of the best ways to improve your mental health. And so even if it's just five, 10 minutes every day, making this a habit, I think is essential. Number 10 is making time for movement. I didn't used to do this, but more recently I try to take regular breaks when I'm studying, when I'm sitting down for a long period of time, just to get up, have a very quick stretch, even if it's just five minutes. I might do a 10 minute yoga flow, a 10 minute ballet fit class, go on a 10 minute walk, just using movement as study breaks. Again, there are studies that show this can improve focus when you come back to work. Number 11 is trying to incorporate meditation into your everyday routine. There are so many benefits to meditation and it doesn't have to be in a conventional sense. You don't have to sit down and meditate, though that can be very good. I treat my morning walks as a form of meditation. I think it's just a time where you try and focus on the present moment. And so meditation can look different for all of us. Next, clean your desk once a week. Have a deep clean, disinfect your desk. Uh, dust, which honestly I don't that often and I probably should. I always feel so great when I sit down at my desk and it's been deep cleaned. Also leading on from that, tidying your room every night so when you wake up uh, you are not distracted by that clutter. I always find that I get distracted if there are lots of things around me and I haven't tidied up and I end up procrastinating by going and tidying. Then penultimately, waking up and going to sleep at the same time. It doesn't really matter what time you go to bed and what time you wake up as long as it's consistent. So setting an alarm for when you're going to go to sleep can be really useful and then setting an alarm when you wake up. I use the app Alarmy, which makes you do a task if you want to turn off the alarm and it always gets me out of bed. I've been using it for years and would highly recommend it. As a student, it's really easy to sacrifice sleep schedules. It's one of the first things to go, but prioritizing getting enough sleep is so essential because like we just focus better and we work better when we've got enough sleep. And then finally, one thing I'm going to be trying to do all of this year is trying to find time regularly to switch off. So I'm hoping to actually schedule this time. So have a set time every week. For example, I want for Sunday mornings to be work free to see how long that lasts but every day at least making time for some kind of self-care so that could be conventional self-care like face masks or um something like reading uh like sitting down and reading a book for pleasure or watching something with my family just actually making sure that i am prioritizing that so i hope you enjoyed watching this video i hope you gained some ideas of habits to bring about in the new year and i hope that you have a productive week Bye.